Hey, this is Eric. I'm going to talk about buffering in QGIS. Buffering is a really typical GIS operation that basically takes all of your features in a layer and makes them bigger. Um, the reason why you would want to make your features bigger is um, you might want to look at proximity in relation to some other phenomenon. For example, you might want to take um, a layer with rivers on it and make the rivers 300 feet wider on either side to get an idea of pollution to 300 feet of either side, right? So make them bigger and then select in that bigger area. That's a buffer. Um, buffers tend to be really useful, so why don't I get on with it then? I'm going to do an example with Parks property in New York City, and I'm going to overlay it with graffiti reported locations. And I'm going to do this. It's a spreadsheet. It's a CSV file. It has X and Y coordinates in 2263. State Plain, Long Island. There are front 144 records without X and Y coordinates, as you can see there. That's OK. Um, so now it's asking me for the CRS. I know that it's 2263. So I'm going to tell it that. And look, they overlap. Awesome. Do they still overlap if I turn off on the fly projection? That is important. Are they actually in the same projection? They are. Great. That means we don't have to do too much work here. Um, like any geoprocessing operation, you need to make sure that all of your layers are in the same projection before you move forward. Otherwise, you're going to get, um, at best, useless results. At worst, very misleading results. So um, why don't we do, before we do a buffer, why don't we select all of the graffiti that was reported on Park's property? To do that, you go up to Vector. And I always lose it. <laughs> research Tools, Vector Research Tools. And it's Select by Location. So I want to select graffiti locations that intersect a park. Um, yeah and you could remove it from a selection, all that fun stuff. I don't want to do any of that. I just want to select them. Um, if you witnessed me struggling with this earlier because there were too many points and it was taking too long, you can tell that I removed a lot of the points to make it go faster. Uh, this is the kind of thing that uh, GIS can take a while doing. It's not necessarily just QGIS. Um, or any other. What just happened there? Did, did I lose the points? What's going on? Okay, that was weird. It kind of disappeared for a second. I think the projection changed when it finished. That was weird. Um, what? All right, I'm going to turn on the fly transformation back on. Okay, so anyway, sometimes things take a while. Sometimes you just have to sit and wait for JS to actually select things for you or do some other operation. Anyway, we see that some things were selected, and these things that were selected are directly within those polygons. Pretty small areas. You see a line of graffiti on this median that's owned by the Parks Department. That's pretty interesting. And you also see this one that's really close to Parks property. Depending on what you're doing, it's probably close enough to Parks property to count. Um, yeah. So, and not so much actually in the larger parks themselves. That might be have something to do with the way the data is reported, or um, maybe parks, the department 
takes care of graffiti in their own way. I'm sure there's something going on there. Anyway, um, let's say we want to be able to capture points like this that are just outside of a park also. If we want to do that, we want to introduce a buffer. And you do that by going up to Vector, Geoprocessing Tools, Buffers. And we want to buffer the parks layer. You could also buffer your points. Buffering the points of the graffiti locations could be interesting. Not going to do it this time, but that's totally an option. Uh, you need a distance. I'm going to say 50. 50 what, you ask? Good question. I know it's feet in this case because the projection is in feet. But um, if you were in WGS84, it would be degrees. And 50 degrees is huge in WGS84. So you probably, if you're going to be doing this kind of operation, you probably want to project into a local projection that makes sense for you. Um, so I'm not going to change the other settings. You could dissolve the buffer. I'm not going to do that in this case. I'm just going to browse and I think, okay, I'm going to call it parks buffered. I'm overwriting a file that I did to test this out. I'm replacing it and adding it to my canvas. That was fast. And check it out. The parks are now buffered. Uh, I'm going to pull the buffer back behind the parks so you can see the parks themselves and then the expanded buffer. Um, so this is 50 feet out from each feature in the parks file. In this case, you can tell that these are all part of the same feature because they're overlapping. Um, this, these two are not the same feature, so you can see the seam between the two. If we checked that dissolve checkbox, we wouldn't see a seam. That's the only difference. Um, so we still have the same number of features. Um, and if you wanted to, you could totally <clears throat> open up the attribute table. It's all the same stuff. Uh, the features are just a little bit fatter. That's all. Uh, so now I'm going to go back to research tools under vector, and I'm going to select by location again. But this time I am going to select the graffiti locations that are in my buffered file. And I'm going to create a new selection with that. And we'll see how long this takes. So we're doing the same exact select by location that we did before, but with parks that take up more space. And you can see that we selected a lot more stuff. Um, these things that happened really, really close to this property also got selected. I think that's often what you want to do in a situation where you're selecting this way. Um, but it totally depends on what you're, what you're looking for and what kind of statement you're trying to make with your data. Um, so yeah, that is really quick and dirty how buffering works in QGIS and what it's useful for. I hope that is helpful for you.